Let's look at the story of Lou. Today I want to talk about education. Something I get asked all the time, should I go to film school? Young Lou was passionate about wildlife. Every night he'd watch documentaries about animals and plants in the world. In fact, that led him to become a biologist. And because he liked learning about wildlife stories, he'd also tell the wildlife stories. In fact, he'd tell the story of every animal he found. People loved them. Friends, family, everyone really. Then he found out that he could go to film school. And here is where the dilemma begins. Should Lou go to film school? Or really put it this way, should you go to film school? In fact, you can take everything about Lou and substitute his passion with your passion, and then you've got the exact same predicament. We're gonna talk about it in very broad terms. I think it's something that is important to bring up the pros and the cons. Let's start with the pros. And let me just preface this with the fact that I'm not Lou, but I have a very similar background. I have a master's degree in science, like Lou, and I now have a master's degree in science filmmaking. So let's get started. Film school, I believe, will advance Lou's learning tenfold. One year of intensive classes, you can probably learn as much as you would stumbling along in three to five years doing it as a side hobby. I know. I stumbled along for a while and then I took film school and it accelerated my learning. Two, you're learning from the pros. I mean, very quickly, you're gaining confidence. You, you know that what you're learning is the industry standard. And that's fantastic because you're learning lighting, sound, editing, pitching, budgeting, scripting from people who've done it for 30 years. Three, you learn to think very critically about every decision that you make. I mean, here are some of the books that I read. We're forced to read all these books that you might not normally pick up off of the shelf. And what that does is that it makes sure that everything that I'm doing is intentional. If I set up an out of focus shot and I'm looking off camera, intentional. If I add a weird and creepy sound effect with dark color grading, that's intentional. And to bring it back to myself, how I discuss wildness and how I discuss nature. All of that is intentional because I read way too many books on it. <laughs> and next, the friends that you make in film school, they're your friends for life. I mean, they are people that you spend an intensive amount of time with, learning from and shooting with, often camping with, in my situation. Those are the people that now work at the head of National Geographic and Smithsonian and BBC. I can call them up if I need to and ask questions or get their advice. So that is a huge plus. Let's also add into the pros that you're gonna have the time of your life. For Snowis Montanus, studying a different, ah! I mean, it is super fun. You know, it's like, how it could be better, you know? To have a bunch of people who are like-minded and you start learning filmmaking with and expanding your possibilities, it's so much fun. For me, I did it in Bozeman, Montana, and it was awesome. Did I sell it? That was the point of the pros section. But let's bring it back a little bit to the cons. First of all, it's not free. Film school is not at all free. Nobody's gonna pay you to go to film school. It is very expensive. In fact, I came out of film school with a $70,000 debt. I know people who had much greater debt even than that. And this was back 10, 12, oh my gosh, I'm getting old, a long time ago. The point is, you're gonna be paying that debt off for a long time and maybe that holds you down and makes you get a desk job. Do you think that's what Lou signed up for? To have a desk job in some big city like Washington or Chicago or New York City or San Francisco? Maybe not. I actually got lucky and got a job before I even graduated and paid off my debt within two years of graduating. So, whew, saved by luck on that one. <laughs> oh, there's the thing. Oh, let's go, come on. Let's go. <laughs> two, I think one of the biggest biggest problems with film school is that you are now going to overthink everything. Remember all those books that I said I read? Well, they're great, but now I can't talk about wild places anymore because I'm overthinking it too much. I mean, for instance, think about this. Do you think Steve Irwin started to think in his head what image he's portraying when he jumps on an animal and like hauls it out of the wild and then shows it to everybody? Well, probably not. I did, I wrote like a five page paper on it. <laughs> now I overthink it too much. Do you think Coyote Peterson overthinks it when he lets a whole bunch of things sting him to get views? Stung by a tarantula hawk? 
a bullet ant, bitten by a snapping turtle, you name it. Does he overthink it? No, probably not. He just knows it's getting views and it's popular and he does more of it. Make sense? Let me put it this way. If you're a musician and you want to become a rock star, make the most popular music there is and get rich, do you think you're going to go and get a PhD in music? Or do you think a PhD in music is actually even going to help you? <laughs> it's kind of the same with film school, although maybe not quite as extreme. Next, remember I said those friends that you made in film school are going to be friends forever? Well, that's kind of true. And at the same time, there's a different side. They are also your biggest critics. They're your peers. They're the people you want to impress. And sometimes if they say something that is frank and honest to them, it could hurt a lot more than if it was just some random person on the internet. For instance, I remember in film school, we had this critique session that was going on and I showed this film, which I thought was really cool. We all went to this little place called Pony Montana. A portrait of Pony. And I thought it was just a really fun experience. So I used a lot of Europop in it. <laughs> I remember during, during the film session, everybody was like, dude, Rob, you cannot use Europop over the top of that. That is terrible. This is a sad little town in the middle of nowhere. I didn't see it that way. It hurt. I like making things fun. I worry sometimes that they see what I'm doing with jealousy or have some other animosity towards what I'm doing because I'm trying to teach you all how to make films for free when they just went to film school. <laughs> Last point here, when you go to film school, you're going to start to homogenize. You're going to start to become similar to all the other people that you're going to film school with. You started out as your very beautiful lemon telling your own little stories, right? And then now you're starting to tell the same stories everybody else is telling. And on top of that, you have now moved to a place where everybody is at and the competition is high. You're now a small fish in a pond that uh, doesn't have a lot of food. So my biggest advice for you is if you go to film school, quickly get out of the town that you went to film school in and you can become a big fish again. For instance, right now, it's like 200 miles to the next big wildlife filmmaker. So I'm, I'm a big fish. Big fish in a small pond, as we say here in the United States. So that was a lot of information that I just spilled out there. And the reason for that is I get this question all the time and I don't really know what to tell people. All I can do is give them the pros, give them the cons. Hopefully they can make up a decision that works for them. When people ask me, would I do it again? I say, you bet I would do it again. Because in hindsight, I don't know if I would be where I am if I didn't go to film school. A big thanks to our patrons, by the way, who are supporting the mission to hopefully educate others out there so they don't have to go to film school. They can just learn from what we're doing. <laughs> and just for fun, comments below. If you're a Lou that went to film school or you're a Lou who didn't go to film school and is learning everything online, like from a channel like this. We definitely all read the comments. I know I do. I try to respond to as many as I can, but other people do too. So I think it's very helpful. Also, before I forget, the world premiere of our big feature length documentary is airing in Wisconsin tomorrow night. I am so excited. If you're near La Crosse, come visit us, say hi. If not, we're, we're screening the whole thing live to our patrons at all tier levels, even $1. Uh, come join us. If not, we're going to send you a little link that says, here's the documentary. Watch it. We'll see you guys later.